countdown for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, X minus one, fire. From the far horizons of the unknown come tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future. Adventures in which you'll live in a million could be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Galaxy Science, X minus one. Tonight, the time after the next atomic war. The place, somewhere in the United States. The story, The Moon is Green by Fritz Leiber. The moon was green. Green as emeralds. Green as leaves. Green as grass. I reached my arms toward it and let it bathe me. I closed my eyes and let it kiss me. Effie! Effie, where are you? Oh, dear Lord, he mustn't see it. It's so beautiful and he always kills beauty. Effie! In the bedroom, Hank. I've got to close the shutters before he comes. Mustn't. Mustn't. Effie! What the devil are you doing? Close those shutters, you fool! Come away from there. You're trying to destroy yourself and me, too. You know those shutters are not safe to open for another five years. I only wanted to look at the moon. The moon? Here, count yourself for radiation. You know what the Central Committee would do to you for breaking the lead shield? Kill me. I wouldn't mind. Don't talk like that. Would it be so different from being shut up in a lead coffin the way we are now? Would it be worse than the eternal thud of the air conditioners and the radiation filters? Be still and count yourself. Good Lord. We're past the danger zone. Oh, wait a minute. Did you take off your watch? No. Well, give it to me. You fool. You little fool. What am I going to do with you? Can't you understand what kind of a world you're living in? You? Oh, yes, husband. I can understand only too well. It's the world that can't seem to understand. The world that went on stockpiling hydrogen bombs. The world that started testing those bombs telling itself it hadn't really exploded enough to make the air dangerous. And then began to throw them across continents, one nation against another. It lasted about two months. And after that, the fury. The fury of doomed men who thought only of taking with them as many of the enemy as possible. After the fury, came the time of terror. Men and women with death sifting into their bones and through their nostrils, fighting for bare survival under a dust-hazed sky that played fantastic tricks with the light of the sun and the green light of the moon. The only chance for existence was to claim one of those underground radiation shielded places they went to the strong and afterward the waiting behind the lead shields the endless interminable waiting 
You understand, I suppose, that we were allowed to reclaim this ground-level apartment only because the committee believed us to be responsible people? And because I've been making a darn good showing lately? Yes, Hank, I understand. It's a privilege to have some privacy, you know. I could send you back to the basement tenements. Would you like that? Oh, no. Anything rather than that fetid huddling and that shameless communal sprawl. Yet is this really so much better? Being on the surface is meaningless. It only tantalizes. And yet... Well? No, no, Hank. I, I don't want to go back underneath. Well, then try to behave yourself. Coming up through the tunnel just now, I decided I'd better talk to you. Frankly, Effie, the committee's beginning to be a little concerned about our lack of children. Oh. Charlie Baker asked me this morning if I'd like my name put on the list for a free woman. You needn't bother. What do you mean? I mean... We're going to have a baby. We... What? Effie, Effie, are you sure? Yes. Effie, that's wonderful. It's magnificent. Do you realize what this means to my rating with the committee? You know how important it is to the community to raise healthy members for the day when we can resume the surface war. Yes, I've heard the broadcast. We'll announce it at the meeting of the junior committee tonight. Tonight? Well, well you hadn't forgotten about it, had you? It's the annual banquet. Now, you brighten yourself up and put on your best dress. I want the other juniors to see what a handsome wife the new member has got. What's the trouble now? Well, I'm terribly sorry, Hank, but... Oh, you'll have to go alone. I'm really not well. There you go again. First the infantile, inexcusable business of opening the lead shutter, and now this. Don't you know what this could mean to my reputation, Effie? I'm sorry. You're coming, Effie. This is just neurotic pampering. Hank... I'll just be sick and you wouldn't be proud of me at all. Now, listen, Effie. Tonight's too important. It, it'll, it'll cause a lot of bad comment if a new member's wife isn't present. Now, you know how just a hint of sickness starts all kinds of rumors about radiation disease. Now, now, what do you say? No. Effie, you're going. There's nothing wrong with you if I have hey. to... Hey. You're hurting my arm. It, it isn't good for the baby. Oh, the baby? I'd, I'd almost forgotten. Oh. oh, no, we have to be very careful. I, well, I, I suppose if I explain to them you aren't there because of the baby, it will make a difference. Uh, yes, I'll just stay here alone till you come back. When will you be back? Well, those things usually go on pretty late. So if you're expecting company, you needn't worry. Hank. Yes, Effie? Do you remember when we were first married? Of course I remember. You liked to go skiing, remember? You said it was like feeding a hunger for beauty being up on a mountain covered with snow. What are you talking about? You forgot. I haven't forgotten. I have just as much desire to get outside as you do, but... Uh... I know there's no chance for me. I've got to see that my children and their children survive to see the sun again. We've got to behave like adults, to make sacrifices. We've got to keep the strain pure. Hank, what do you suppose it's like for them? For whom? The freaks and the mutants. The outsiders. What do you know about them? I remember some of the pariahs. They were hairless Cringing creatures with radiation welts all over their bodies. They came begging to be taken in during the last months of the terror. The committee ordered them shot down, just like dogs. We don't like to talk about that. Hank, are they still out there? Effie, this is the sort of talk that's just morbid. Are they? Yes. There are still humans out there. At least they were humans. They know better than to come near the shoulders now. Poor 
creature. I can't stand here discussing this nonsense all night. I have to get going. For the last time, are you sure you won't come down with me? No. I'll wait here. Don't you get lonely? No. I was talking to Jim Barnes today. He told me he wasn't going to be able to make it to the banquet either. Touch of the old flu, he said. That isn't like him, is it? Effie, are you listening? What? You remember Jim Barnes, don't you? He used to be sweet on you. Said you had the soul of a poet. Well, yes, I remember him. Why? Never mind. Well, I uh, guess I got a bit sharp with you. I'm sorry about that. I was excited about being made a junior and the baby and all. Selfish of me. I apologize. As you uh, get to bed early, I'll probably go over to the men's dorm for a while after the meeting. You'll be completely alone for the next four hours. Do you mind? What? Oh, uh, no. No. Good night, Effie. He looked at me strangely. And then his features returned to their usual, harder, more calculating expression. Was it possible that he had sensed my very dream? Had it been a dream? It must have been. It wasn't possible that it had really happened. It had just been an illusion, a silly projection out of my starved romantic imagination. I waited until Hank's footsteps vanished down in the tunnel. And then I waited until I heard it. It is impossible. There's nothing out there. Nothing but deformed monsters. I mustn't open the shutters. I mustn't. Oh, dear Lord, I've got to know. I've got to know. Bueno, so you haven't forgotten our meeting after all. You. And were you expecting someone else? It wasn't a dream. You really were out there last night. Oh, yes, on the night before. Well, I was afraid I dreamed it. I, I, I still think it's a dream. I... Lean out into the moonlight a moment. Is this a dream? Oh. Or was it a flesh and blood kiss? And your name is Patrick. I? Patrick. Well, now, did you open the window to find God's own breath, the fresh evening air, or did you open it to invite me in? Oh, of course. Come in. Come in. Come, George Lewis. Ah, oh, here now, let me help you. Being a cat with 12 toes on each foot and ears like boxing gloves is a bit cumbersome. I have to help him a bit, you see. Come on now, laddie. There, now. Is, uh, is your husband about? No. No, he won't be home for a while. I still I'd better close the door. Oh, no. Leave them open. The radiation? I don't care. I want to see the moonlight. Would you have a bit of food? Joe Lewis and I are starved for a bite to eat. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll get it. Oh, Effie. Yes? Oh, but you're a fair creature. Thank you. His face wasn't horrible at all. Only thin and sensitive and terribly sad. And there were no radiation welts or scars on his skin. He looked just as he had looked that first night when I opened the lead shutter and saw him crouched at the window. And now I knew it had been no dream. 
he was an outsider, a pariah. He was my love. Here's some canned meat and a food pill, and I put on some water for coffee. Ah, oh, bless you, Arun. Come on now, Joe. Here, here's a bit of meat for your black soul to feed on. <laughs> He's hungry, poor creature. <laughs> well, then. Sit down, girl, where I can look at you. All right. <laughs> Have you missed me? Oh, yes. Oh, I've had some thoughts of you, I dare say. Talk to me. Of what? Tell me again about outside, what it's like. Again. Again and again. <laughs> Well, now, outside... You say the coffee's heating? Mm-hmm. Well, then, it is a wonderland for sure. More amazing than you and your entombed folk could ever imagine a veritable fairy land. Oh, tell me the truth about but The it. truth? I am telling you the truth, my love. But the bombs and the dust made only ugliness. At first, at first. But then they changed the life in the seed of them that were brave enough to stay. Wonders beyond wondering bloomed and walked. We'll have none of you been outside. Well, the radiation teams go up into the ruined buildings once or twice a year to find canned food and batteries. But they can only work for a few minutes at a time. Ah, sure, those blind-souled slugs could never see anything but food and batteries anyway. Tell me what you see beyond the city, I mean. Ah, there are gardens there. Gardens where a dozen buds blossom for every one before. And the flowers have petals a yard across. Oh. And there are stingless bees as big as sparrows soap in their necks. Did the radiation make all the cats like this one? Like this runt? Why, no, girl. They are grown spotted and huge as leopards. But they're gentle beasts, for the dust has burned all the murder out of every living thing. Well, Hank says the dust kills. Would you like to hear a poem, my maid? Yes. I, I'd say it. Fire can hurt me, or water, or the weight of earth. But by some curious coincidence, the dust is my friend. Oh, more. <laughs> well, then, there are robins like cockatoos and squirrels like a prince's ermine, all under a treasure chest of sun and moon and stars that the dust changes from ruby to emerald and sapphire. And there are... What is it, love? What's that look for? There's one thing you've never told me about. And what is that? The children. The new children. Ah, no, the children. The truth. The truth? Promise. I swear on the skin of my cat here. The children, is it, huh? Well, now, if you'd ever catch a glimpse of one of them, you'd never doubt me again. They have long limbs and smiling, delicate faces and white teeth and the finest hair. They're so nimble that... Well, that even I, a sprightly man and somewhat enlivened by the dust, feel crippled beside them, and their thoughts dance like flames. But what's wrong with them, Patrick? Wrong? Nay, love, there's nothing wrong. Different, perhaps, are new, but not wrong. Oh, tell me, tell me. Well, then, they do have seven fingers on each hand and eight toes on either foot. But they're much more beautiful for it. And they have large, beautiful ears that the sun shines through. So lovely and delicate to behold. How do they behave? They're mine. Not as you and I, perhaps. They play happily in the gardens all day long, laughing and finding joy in the simplest beauty. Are they defective? Well, now, by the standards out there... You're the defective one shut up here all the while hating and crawling in ugliness and feeling dirty. No, they're quite lovely. And they're quite perfect, the new children. Oh, you're telling the truth. You're not making it up. It is true, every word of it. Oh, I'll admit you have to look a bit hard to find these things I've been telling you. But find them you may. Do you believe me? Oh, yes. Yes, I believe you. But I'm afraid. Give me your hand. Here. Now, 
listen to me. You must not be afraid to do as your heart tells you. That's why I'm here. Oh, Patrick. Patrick. Don't either of you move. Oh, Hank, I... Stay there, I'll blast both of you. Oh, Hank, but... Carrying on like this, and not even with a man of the community, with an outcast, a pariah. No, oh, man, I know what you're thinking, but you're wrong. I just happened to be coming by hungry, a lonely tramp. And I knocked at the shutter and your wife was a bit foolish and let her kind heart get the best of it. Do you think you can sell me that? Hank, please. So you're going to have a child, my dear. My child? Yes, your child. Ah. I should pull this trigger right now. I should shoot him down in cold blood. Man, you're mad. I never touched your wife. You contaminated pariah. You're going to die. Don't you know that? Hank. Hank, if you kill him, you kill the bringer of the best news we've ever had. Oh, Hank, put aside your jealousy for just a minute and listen to me. Patrick has something wonderful to tell us, all of us. What do you mean? I mean that we need no longer fear the dust. Oh, Hank, remember how it was with me. All the exposure I had, and yet there are no burns. Hank, those who were brave enough to stay outside have adapted. They've become a beautiful people. Did he tell you that? Everything that grew or moved was purified. He filled you with lies so he could take you... No, it's true. The radioactivity is almost gone, burned out. Effie, I've been out there. It's horrid. No, no, no. You've been blinded. Blinded to beauty. Blinded to living. Good Lord, you believe it. It's true. It must be true. Look at Patrick. He's living proof. He's been outside for a year and there isn't a mark on him, not a scar. It's because he's brave. And the dust can't hurt the brave. Oh, you think that's it, huh? All right, Effie, I'm going to prove something to you. You, Patrick, take this radiation counter. Take it. Very well. Press the button and count yourself. Go on. As you say. Read it. Read it! One thousand seven hundred. Yeah, you hear that, Effie? One thousand seven hundred radioactives. Enough to kill a thousand men. He's like raw radium. If you turn out the light, he'll glow green in the dark. A week's exposure to him will destroy you. What are you proving, Hank? That he's a freak! A freak! Get away from him! He's destroying you right now! May I shut this thing off now? Patrick. Is it true? Yes, I'm afraid it is true. Oh, oh you do well to cringe, both of you. I'm living death. I'm death itself. As your husband so wisely said, I'm a freak. Just like the man who ate nails and walked on fire. Only my oddity is that for some unknown reason, the dust can't harm me. I'm the only one. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen. Not too close now. And examine the man who couldn't die. And now, if you don't mind, I'll go back to my dead world. And leave you to yours. Wait. All of those... Those beautiful things. It gets so lonely. Out there. And I was starved for beauty. And so were you. There's no garden out there. Garden. Listen to me, the both of you. What is out there is more terrible than either of you can imagine. You're worse than Hank, even. He only killed beauty once. But you brought it to life so you could kill it again. You're afraid. Afraid of the loneliness out there. Well, I'm not afraid. Effie, keep away from the window. No, I'm not afraid. Maybe there is no garden out there. 
and no beautiful, strange children to play happily. But there can be if we're brave enough. Effie. I'm going, Hank. I'm going, Hank. Effie, come back, Effie. There's no use trying to keep her, man. Effie, come back. I love you. Come back. There's no use, man. There's still time. She stood the dust better than most. There's still time. You. The dust won't hurt you. Find her. Bring her back. I'll reward you. I'll, I'll give you food. If you want her, you'll have to go yourself. She'll die. Maybe she won't. How can you say such a thing? Because perhaps she's like me. Aye. Perhaps the two of us together could be the first of a race that'll live in sunlight again. Get against the wall where I can kill you easier. Why would you kill me? Is killing all the answer you have to life's riddles? Is the smell of blood better than compassion? Is it more joy to own her than to be loved by her? Move! Man, you'll not kill me. Shall I tell you why? Because my flesh will not die. I live a thousand years. Not your brain, Patrick. And that's where this gun is aimed. Well, then you leave me no choice. You get it! Hey! Call him off! Put my arm! Go! Go! Oh. Oh. Well, then I have your weapon now. Out there, you see, we freaks have learned to live together and to cooperate. It's the only way we can stay alive. Oh, I'll... I'll give Effie your love. Come on, Joe. Oh, you'd... Uh, you'd better close the shutters as soon as we're gone. The moon is beautiful. But it's deadly. <laughs> I was waiting for him at the end of the ruined street. When we looked back, we saw Hank closing the lead shutters on himself. We were alone in the world. Above us, the moon was green. I bent and picked up a handful of the dust and let it trickle through my fingers. And I remembered the words of Patrick's poem. Fire can hurt me, or water, or the weight of the earth. But by some strange coincidence, the dust is my friend. You have just heard X-1, presented by the National Broadcasting Company in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, which this month features Advance Agent by Christopher Anvil, the story of a spy who had the worst possible break. The disguise he had assumed was that of a famous man. Galaxy Magazine, on your newsstand today. Tonight, by transcription, X-1 has brought you The Moon is Green, a story from the pages of Galaxy written by Fritz Leiber and adapted for radio by George Leppards. Featured in the cast were Joyce Gordon as Effie, Bill Lipton as Hank, Ian Martin as Patrick, and Frank Milano as the cat. This is Fred Collins. X-1 was directed by Fred Way and is an NBC Radio Network production. <laughs> <laughs>